Hi guys, this is Dondo. Nice to meet you again. To be honest, I hesitated on whether I should make this video because it's a very personal thing to talk about and I might get emotional, I don't know. A couple of weeks ago, my professor in university texted me asking if she could use my poem in her course. That poem I wrote in sophomore year. Of course I said yes and I went through my old computers to find that poem. This was a poem I wrote for my father. I was thinking if I could share this poem with her students, why don't I share it here with you guys? My father died of a heart attack when I was 15. He was having a heart disease for about six years. He went through a lot. I remember my father and my mother would always go to the hospital. Like They lived in the hospital for months and uh, they went back to home for a bit and then my father would have emergency again and they went back to the hospital. It went on and off for many, many years. And finally, in 2006, he got a bit better, so he moved back home, um, but obviously he couldn't work. One thing about the disease, it changed his personality. He was a very nice man before he had it. He would always do nice things to us, to his family, to his friends, and uh, he was cheerful. But after he got the disease, he changed to a totally different person. He was moody, he was grumpy, he was irritable. If I didn't go up to his standard, he would yell at me and um, say harsh things on me and scold me and punish me. He wasn't violent, he wouldn't beat me or anything, but it's, um, it's those words. Now I know he just couldn't control himself. He would say things that he didn't actually mean. I was 15. I was a teenage girl. I wouldn't think that much. I just hated him so much. It was tense. My father and I weren't talking. You could always feel the tension in the air. If anything makes him unhappy, then there started a war. One day it just happened. He got a heart attack alone at home in the shower. We only found him a couple of hours later. My mom went home from work, found him on the ground. I only knew it after school. I went home, our apartment was crowded with people. Everyone was there. My mom was howling. I went to the room and everybody's crying and looking at me like looking at a hurt animal and my mom told me you don't have a dad anymore and I didn't cry I couldn't cry I didn't know what to react how to react earlier that day I was the last one who saw him alive because I went back home for lunch that's what I did every day I went back from school for lunch. Dad would cook lunch. That day was like usual. I went back home, lunch was on the table. We had a silent meal as always because we weren't talking. It was a sunny day. It was a beautiful day. He would always be on the balcony. There was a wooden rocking chair for him and he loved that spot and he loved listening to his radio. I didn't know why. Before I left home, I said bye-bye, Dad. He seemed surprised because I never, never did that. I would just left home without saying anything. And that day I said bye-bye to him. And I didn't know that would be the last thing I said to him in the afternoon. He took a shower, he never went back from it. Sometimes I was wondering if it was a hint for me to say 
that goodbye. Maybe the god or superpower was telling me in advance that what would happen and I just out of nowhere said that. It let me not regret too much. Whenever I thought about it, I would be like, yeah, at least I said goodbye. The last time I saw him, he was in the balcony in that rocking chair. So the poem I wrote was called The Rocking Chair on the Balcony. I'm ready to share it with you. Okay, I'm ready. The rocking chair on the balcony. It's still there, the rocking chair. Quietly standing, or more precisely, lying in the corner of the balcony. Can you see it? I see you wearing your navy blue cap, which covers your bald head. The old black radio machine is buzzing in your hand. The clear sky is writing a soft song on your face. You were squinting outside the window, as if dreaming in the wooden rocking chair on the balcony, as the last time I saw you there. The next time I met you, you were lying in a cold coffin. You never noticed how I pinched my arms when you threw those harsh words on me. At that time, you already got the deadly heart disease that changed a kind-hearted man into an absolute sovereign. I could hear you yelling at me behind the door. I could hear you breaking your glasses into pieces. After a long while of silence, I heard you sobbing. Have you sat down by my side and asked me how my day had been? Have you given me a pat on the back and said you were proud of me? I hated you for depriving my rights to be a girl of a good father or a father's good girl. I hated you for not giving me a chance to tell you the most beautiful three words in the world. You were smiling, holding my hand in my dreams. I wouldn't let your hand go. I knew it never belonged to me. And And never would it be. The sun is still shining with warm sunshine touching your shoulders and cheeks. You seem to have fallen asleep in the rocking chair on the balcony. I know you are there. It's been so long since I've seen you. I miss you. The rocking chair gradually stops rocking and stands, or more precisely, lies still in the corner of the balcony, as usual. Yeah. <laughs> I'll put the whole poem down in the description. My dad wasn't a super good dad. As I grew older, I kind of understand, could relate more to him. He was sick. It would be hard for him to be happy. And I knew he loved me. It just he didn't know how to express that or he just couldn't express that. For a long, long time, I felt insecure. I wouldn't be too happy because I knew the happiness would go away. So I kind of suppressed my feelings a lot. Thankfully, gradually, I got out of it. This lesson is a harsh lesson. I guess um, only if you had really lost a loved one, you wouldn't feel it so much because every day is another day, right? But no, every day can be the last day for everyone out there. You cherish every moment of your life. Cherish every moment with your loved ones. Say it out loud. You 
love him, you love her, you love them. I never said it. Last night, I went to see the movie Soul. One lesson I learned from it is to live in the present. Life is so short. I don't want to live for a grand purpose, for money, for fame, for a grand career, whatever. They are in the future. What I wanted to do is to live now, to be happy, be loved, loving, and be contented. So the moment I left the world, I wouldn't regret for anything. I hope this video makes sense to you. I hope it could somehow inspire you. If you are not living in the moment, slow down, find what truly makes you happy, adapted to your present life. If you are in a situation that you couldn't change, maybe there were little tiny things there that could make you happy, you just didn't find them. So slow down again. <laughs> Try to observe the world around you. Try to feel every feeling the world gives you. Maybe you will find, okay, actually, I could be happy. I guess that will be today's video. Hope you have a wonderful day or night. See you next time. Bye, guys.